Gabrielle Ducharme back with the next installment of Beyond the Rings, joined by UCLA softball assistant coach Lisa Fernandez. Lisa is a three-time Olympic gold medalist, a two-time NCAA national champion, and a member of the Team USA Hall of Fame. back into Beyond the Rings. I, of course, am your host, Gabrielle Ducharme, and I am honored to be joined here today by a coach and former player from UCLA softball, as well as a multi-time Olympic gold medalist, Lisa Fernandez. Lisa, thank you so much for taking the time to be on today and to share your story. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on and talking to everybody. Yeah, of course. And I, have of course, just got to start off by asking, how are you and your loved ones doing during this time of well, rather tumultuous events happening in history. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy times, right? Um, trying to look at the bright side, you know, very blessed and very fortunate that um, family is good, uh, enjoying the time. I think things happen for a reason, uh, fortunate or unfortunate, and obviously these circumstances are beyond anybody's control. Um, in 2019, you guys were, I believe you guys were national champions, and then a year right. later, you're gearing up, you're starting your season, and all of a sudden you hear the entire world is going to shut down. What was your first reaction when you did hear that news? A huge. I mean, first of all, you couldn't believe it, right? You're like, is this a dream? Is this a nightmare? Like, how is this possible? You know, to, oh, it's just going to be for a couple of days, you know, to maybe a couple of weeks. And, you know, all of a sudden it was taken away at the time. I, I think we were 26 and one and ranked number one in the country. We were having a phenomenal year and it was devastating, you know, to the coaches obviously but more so the, the athletes you know that had been training and working so hard you know for the moment in time and i think especially as a female athlete where you know maybe the future is not uh surrounded by softball you know for some of these athletes you know these are the the final days of their career before they have to hang it up and move on to something else so it, it's devastating to them um so it, it was a difficult time i think one thing that you know as always i think probably a benefit or something that i've been blessed with is to try to make the most of every situation. I, I believe things, you know, happen for a reason and, and whatever, whatever it is, you've got to be able to make the best. And, um, you know, I, I work with the pitchers and it just so happened that the last workout that we had was probably one of the best that we had had in terms of just their attention to detail, their competitiveness, the fire, the energy. And, you know, I told them, I said, Hey, if we're going to go out, I mean, there was no better way to go out. On all of those moments in the Olympic games or the days where you just didn't want to get out of bed because you were <laughs> training so hard or because, you know, your college days were dragging on, you know, in the moment it feels like it's forever. And then you look back, you're like, wow, three Olympic games have passed. What goes through your mind when you think back on your entire Olympic journey? Just how blessed I was, uh, you know, so fortunate. Things could have gone one way, they could have gone another. And, and uh, I'm a big believer in, in doing things the right way. Um, I've always lived my life like that. I've placed God first and being able to realize that he's been, you know, he's blessed me with some amazing athletic ability, but also mentality. Uh, fortunate for the teammates that I had because very easily, you know, we all know that it's not done by any one person. And so you're right. I mean, when I look back at it, I, I can't believe it's, I don't even want to say how many years since my first Olympic gold medal, because that would date me. But, you know, time flies. And I enjoyed the ride. Uh, there would not, there, There's nothing that I would have done differently. Um, I was always an overtrainer and overprepared. Uh, I was prepared for the worst case scenario. So, you know, to me, there was no stone that was left unturned. And I, I felt good about every time I stepped out on that field, I knew I was prepared and whatever the outcome was, I could live with it. And I, and I learned that lesson very early in, in actually in high school, I was a CIF champion my freshman year and my sophomore year, I thought it was automatic. And I, I took it for granted because we, we had so many players returning from the previous year. And, and I remember, you know, kind of cutting corners and maybe not doing things to the best of my ability in terms of focus and time commitment and, you know, decisions that had to be made and, and, and uh, you know, we ended up losing. And, you know, the worst feeling I had was walking off the field and saying, what if, you know, what if I would have gone to the, you know, to the field and, and pitched, you know, one extra day a week or, or took an, you know, extra BP and you learn. And I learned a very valuable lesson that that was a feeling I never wanted to have. So in each of those Olympic games, it was 100% commitment of making sure that I was going to do 
my job and that was representing my country um, the best way I could and that was on the field and, and being an Olympic athlete. Do you happen to remember the moment that you heard that softball was no longer going to be an Olympic sport and what you felt in that moment? I was actually in Spain with the national team um, just kind of as an advisor at that time because I was um, pregnant with my son at the time and uh, they were talking about it. And I remember watching those kids play who were going to be the future of our game and thinking, wow, you know, this is going to be devastating news. Um, you know, being an Olympic sport took us to a whole nother level in terms of just notoriety, uh, you know, coverage and the awareness. I mean, one thing about the Olympic games is whether you're an athlete or not an athlete, you follow the Olympic games. And, you know, I had a, a professor at UCLA who, you know, walked up to me and said, you know, are you Lisa Fernandez? And I said, yes. And she said, I follow no sport. I am not a sports person, but I do know the Olympic games and thank you for representing our country. And, and at that point I thought, wow, this is the magnitude of what the Olympic games is all about. And it's true. And so for softball to be removed from the games was devastating because this is an opportunity that this kids uh, at that time had been dreaming about because they knew 96, they knew 2000 and they knew 2004. So it was a cycle of athlete that had grown up following what softball was. And, and that was to be at the pinnacle of what athletics is about. And that's competing at the highest level. And so to have it taken away so quickly, really without much in terms of reason, you know, fan attendance, top 10, um, you know, public ratings in terms of viewership on TV, you know, top five. I mean, you know, it, it was a situation where there really wasn't any direct answer as to why we were actually taken out. And, and that was probably hard. Um, to be able to, to handle, but people have continued to fight. We've gotten back into the games. We're in it for 2021. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be, uh, as far as I know, in Paris uh, in 2024, but hopefully we'll be back, eight, back in in 2028 when, when the games are going to be in LA. So uh, looking forward to the future, but it is um, something that was difficult, very disappointing. I felt like I let my sport down, right? Because as an athlete, you want to be able to you know, hand the torch off and hand it off in a, in a position where you're in, in a good state. And we kind of fell a notch below. However, the college game has been huge in terms of what that has done for our sport. The viewership has been amazing. The support that the fans have given, and, and I hope it continues to grow. Yeah, you mentioned um, passing the torch from one generation to another. That's a huge topic we always touch on on this show. Your legacy beyond the sport. Your legacy beyond the rings. What do you believe your legacy is beyond the softball field? Ah, man, I hope people can look at me and, and, and just say, man, she played with her heart. I mean, and, and was a good role model for future kids to come up. I mean, I, you know, five foot six, you know, kind of built like a block. <laughs> um, and if, you know, I, I fully believe that if there's a will, there's a way. And, and um, you know, hopefully I was a good example for that. And uh, I've, you know, a lot of athletes may not want the responsibility of being a role model and I've embraced it. I feel like I've been fortunate and have always been appreciative of the situation that I've been in um, and uh, have always wanted to give back and be a resource for kids to believe that they can do it as well. I'm not saying it's easy. Most of the times it's not. If it's easy, then it's probably not the right way. Um, it's difficult, but I think with support and with drive and with mentorship, there's a lot that can be accomplished. And, you know, hopefully my legacy is that I was someone that people can be proud to be able to talk about and be able to share with their kids uh, and to use me as a role model as far as um, someone that can do it. Uh, from what I read, you were a four time CIF player of the year in high school at St. Joseph. So when you were wearing the name gesture across your chest, you were. <laughs> yeah. When you were wearing the name Bruin across your chest, you were a winner. And when you were wearing the name USA across your chest, once again, you were winning. Where does that mentality come from? Is that something that you developed over time? Like the mentality of being a winner, was that something you developed over time? Or was it something that you felt like you just kind of came out of the womb and you were like, okay, I'm going to go hard, no matter the sport, no matter the circumstance? I mean, it's, it, I, I, 
I mean, I want to say I was kind of raised like that. I mean, I, I remember my mom, you know, my parents, very big. My mom was very creative, grew up in New York. I mean, my mom's Puerto Rican, my dad's Cuban. And um, my dad always talked about playing with your gut and your heart. I mean, there was no other way to play. And my mom was always about playing by the rules. If you can't play by the rules, then we're not playing this game, you know, and, and there's no cheating and there's no taking shortcuts. You play and you play the way the game is meant to be played. And if you can't play the right way, then don't play at all. And so I, I think I was raised with that mentality to just be able to go for it. Um, I was supported in my aggressiveness. You know, my dad would be like, oh, you're strong, <laughs> you know, and, and kind of broke the mold, uh, you know, being Puerto Rican and Cuban. You know, I know my dad tells of a story about his friends that wondered why he was letting his daughter continue to play sports, you know, well into her 20s. And he asked if he could borrow, you know, my gold medals. And, you know, he told his friends, this is why my daughter plays the game. And, you know, he was very supportive in terms of my career as long as it stood. But, you know, I always looked at the game as the game, regardless of whether you're playing for a championship or you're playing a, a practice game. I, I went at it the same way. The mentality was to go hard, was to be fearless and was to just want to compete. And so uh, put myself in situations where, you know, I wanted to make sure I was surrounded by great people. My mom and dad did a great job of being able to do that, to challenge me. And, um, you know, once again, just really fortunate. And I remember, you know, once again, I, I already alluded to the fact I didn't like to disappoint. I was given an award of being inducted into the Lakewood Hall of Fame after my freshman year in high school. And I remember that was also something, you know, I'm, I'm a person that looks for motivation. And I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to disappoint them. They, as a freshman in high school, I was inducted into a hall of fame. The last thing I would want to do is be a one hit wonder. And so it just, you know, constantly there was just this um, belief I had that I needed to represent. And, um, you know, I wanted to represent their decision of, of taking a chance on me and, you know, and, and <laughs> putting me into, into a hall of fame as a freshman in high school. And I've lived up to that and I'm honored by that. And I wanted to pay them back by giving me that honor and bestowing me with such an accomplishment that it wasn't something that I took lightly. And I wanted to prove them right and support maybe those people that might've doubted why you would give that award to a freshman. And so I, I did, I used that as a motivator every year to want to continue to be great and to kind of live up to the challenge.